if we're more conscious on on what the symbols mean and what uh, and how they work and what they uh, what feeling they evoke in in our psyche, then it's easier to make these sort of very profound, very powerful works that are going to communicate the message. My guest today is Dimitris Lazaru, but you may know him as Dimi. He runs a successful branding designing business in London and this year he decided to make a huge leap. We had a very interesting conversation about semiotics, symbols, branding, business, science and gastronomy and how all those can help you create brands that will stand the test of time. Hey, what's up? This is the Distance to Destination Show, a podcast where I invite creative people to talk about their dreams, goals, and whatever they like. Today, all the way from London, is Dimi. What's up, man? Hey, guys. Um, very nice to be here. Um, it's, um, it's a really nice opportunity, so thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for being my second abroad guest. <laughs> it's, it's an honor. <laughs> So, uh, who you are and what you do. Okay, so I'm originally Greek. Uh, this is the connection with uh, Christus, I suppose. Um, I, I studied, I'm, I'm a branding designer. I, I pretty much uh, make brand identities. Um, I, it, I've been in London for the last four years. Before that, I, I lived in Greece and worked in Greece. And um, yeah, I started. I started my own journey as um, as a business owner um, about a year and a half ago. So this is pretty much all my life right now: growing <laughs> my business and uh, making sure I understand that my purpose is in the world and trying to to make it happen. Awesome. Um, so I have a question, a signature question that I ask all the uh, guests. Uh, that comes from the title of the podcast, uh, which is what is your distance from your destination? Meaning, what is your dream goal right now? And how far do you think you are to get there? That's a great idea. First of all, like it's a good question. Um, I think, I think, first of all, it's, it's easy to tell I'm far away. Um, I'm, I, my my destination is to my destination is to make sense of of the things that we do as designers and and control it in a more substantial way and understand it and stop being so wasteful sometimes with with the things we produce and i think we're really far away from this right now it's just a very very brand new thing um, that is happening. And also I can tell that all, all the people I, I sort of, um, I'm inspired of and the people I'm, I'm used to, um, modeling my life after they all had their breakthroughs quite, not their breakthroughs, but their ultimate peaks. They mm -hmm. had them quite late in life. So yeah. um, all my design icons are, you know, were old when they did stuff like mm -hmm. Alan Fletcher is one of my favorite designers. He was quite old when he, he was at his peak or mm -hmm. so bass or um, even business people. Uh, I'm, I think I'm, I'm far away from it, but the good thing is in the last year, I, I've sort of understood Mm -hmm. the destination and what I'm meant to be doing. Because if you asked me a year ago, I would have a very vague idea of where I want to be financially, but nothing else. Like I only mm -hmm. just, I only knew how much money I wanted to make and, and that's fine. That's a starting point. But, I, but now I want, I, I know what I want to be doing. So that's, that's a awesome. whole new. Um, yeah. Figuring this out, I think it's, it's a start. You need to, to figure it out first. And this is very important. There is some pressure 
on finding this out. And there is, there is conversation, especially in the design circle lately uh, with, um, you know, I, I heard your podcast with uh, Antonis uh, the other day and you were speaking about generalism versus niching down and mm-hmm. finding, finding your one thing. And while I agree that it's important to find your own thing, Mm-hmm. It's I, I find it so easy lately in the design space to to feel bad if you haven't found it and to yeah. make others feel bad if they haven't found mm-hmm. it and I I'm part uh, th- these last two years I'm part of a, a very extended uh, conversation in the design circle and people are like, yeah, but I need to find it and I haven't found it. And now I don't know what I should be doing. And when it comes, it comes. Mm-hmm. Um, the main thing is to prepare yourself for accepting it. That I, I think that's my, that's yeah. my journey so far. Um, all our uh, building and knowledge and education sort of builds up. So you're a great receiver for, for that but life is so different after you've found your thing that it's really hard to it's really hard to explain who, to people who haven't yeah done this yeah i'm at this point right now that i want to uh specialize in something but yeah it's what you said like you can you you need to give it time to grow and you will know when it comes because I have some ideas, but I'm not sure yet. So because I'm not sure, I think that maybe this is not the right thing. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, each one will figure it out in different uh, time and it's not the same from for everyone. Yeah, there's... There's one, there's one detail perhaps people listening to this might want to know about me. So design, design wasn't my first, not my first career, not my first um, education option. And I studied mathematics before that. And so as a result, when I, when I finally accepted design as, as a solution, it was already late in my life. So I, I think, yeah, I, I think I got into design school in the age of 24 mm-hmm. compared to 17, 18 uh, years old that people in Greece do. So everything in my career has sort of come late, um, later than other people, but also Na- like, don't want to say like I'm 33, so I don't want to say oh I'm super old and wise. But it for me, I I'm not sure which things are a result of my design maturity and which things are a result of my age and my position in life. I'm married. I'm you know I've I've put my my mentality in a different situation and. I don't know which parts are culture, which parts are education, which parts are um, maturity. So perhaps, you know, people who are, because I know when I was 22, I had no clue. Like I had no clue what I wanted to be doing or things like that. So especially young people who are sort mm. of trying to find a, a niche. Yeah. Perhaps that's not the time yet. Yeah, yeah. It's going to change definitely uh, after that. Yeah. Uh, for what you said, I think it's a combination from all of the, the things you said. Uh, I love the mug, by the way, <laughs> the Pantone. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's <laughs> going to cool. be a relic quite soon because it's the it's the color of my previous uh, branding um, <laughs> brand color. Uh, hmm. So that's that's going to be changed now. Awesome. Yeah. By the way, you told me that you are in branding now. Your mm-hmm. business is changing. Um, what's up with that? 
in in the spirit of this conversation on the destination and where mm -hmm. we need to be going and stuff like that i i feel there are certain parts in my uh in my journey that have have connected for me to, to reach here so when i started um when i started on my own um i i named my business last design and that's pretty much that was an intentional thing. So for for a while, while I was still back in Greece or um, or working uh, full time employed here in the UK, I sort of always wanted to have um, to have a brand name with um, um, you know with an exciting title and stuff like that. And um, that was cool. This is this is what led to um uh, what led to a lot of association with uh, pixel craft which used to be my uh my studio name before that and the main the main thing is i when i started working on my own i i realized that um bringing myself into this and Putting my own name in in this uh, meant a lot. Uh, so uh, I, I think part of um, the biggest biggest thing is my my previous branding sort of um, took a lot from my personal character and um, mm. my my work ethic and the way I approach things. And it was all about me. Mm -hmm. So as as I was growing, that was good because I I pretty much I used this opportunity to be more outspoken, to be more out in the world, and to be more involved rather than you know be uh, behind a black box, which was my <laughs> my business title. But what happened was my my character my personal character took over and I, I think for a year and a half this brand this business had no brand values other than me being on top so that limited the opportunity to grow and that limited the opportunity to communicate it was pretty much empty and I have been helping my clients make very very strong brands and very careful brands and brands with values and brands with ideals and brands with uh brands with you know philosophy and language mm -hmm. and mine didn't have any so i was i was pretty much um sort of a empty an empty thing so last year i think in in September, yeah, yeah, late September, um, mm -hmm. there was a conflict with another designer from uh, Bulgaria. Uh, he his name is Lazarus something, which is my surname. That was his first name. <laughs> so he was working in Bulgaria as uh, last design himself. He's an interior designer, so it's it's not a direct conflict. Okay. Uh, but he moved his business here in the UK and I, I found out that he registered a business in, in that name. So I started thinking about, you know, is this worth fighting for? Should we come to a solution? Should I tell him like, I've been doing this, like how, how is this going to play out? And that, that in, in, in addition to me feeling sort of that the, my my brand was empty and not really profound i, I sort of started thinking like is this is this it like is this so um, should i f like should i fight for it should i leave it be and then i i started having some conversations uh with with some fellow designers about a big problem uh, that I found out in in design, and I I started thinking, hey, perhaps this is it. Uh, perhaps I should focus on 
on achieving this and position my brand around this. So again, because we're going in circles around the whole thing and what it is and, and the whole inspiration, um, when, I, when I was studying design, the main thing I was trying to find out is why to design the things we design. So if I want to you know, make a poster, why do I need to put these specific things in this specific place and what makes it work and what doesn't make it work? And besides design education being terrible in Greece in various, in various ways and forms, and I was really unhappy and unsatisfied with the way it worked. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, I, I thought, you know, they, they will teach me in school, but they didn't. <laughs> and then I started getting exposed to um, schools internationally. Yeah. And it's probably the same, like nothing happens. Um, well, not much happens in, in giving people options on, on what to produce. So um, I, I started looking more into this and I found there's this this discipline called semiotics, mm -hmm. which is basically the study of symbols and the study of, of meaning and um, the way we, uh, it, it also takes account of the way we understand things. And I thought that this is very important to be introduced into design, especially visual design mm -hmm. um, in, in the world. So, I started obsessing about this and I started, I started sort of, you know, going back into it and, and studying and understanding this. And it was really lucky because some of it, um, most of it, uh, of, of the theories uh, on this space were sort of developed in the 1850s. Um, so they're uh, end for mostly linguists. So it's in a very dense, very weird language, and it's really, it's really hard to commit yourself and, and and take it in. And it's definitely not easily digestible for for people in this uh, um, in this space. But I have this is where my mathematics back, background helped and. Okay. Um, uh, you know, um, I'm studying lots of philosophy, so it actually helps understand this. And mm -hmm. the more, the more I got into it, the more I started thinking, okay, this is something that we can, we can actually quantify and use and, uh, put into, to a good place. So um, all these things combined, the, the uncertainty with, with my own uh, brand uh, and this newfound inspiration from, from this thing told me that this is the thing you need to be doing. This is, mm -hmm. and, and that's, that's what I talked about, you know, finding, finding your thing. Mm -hmm. Like it came to me that, Demi, you're, you're a person who, who can do this. You, you, you're a person who has the capacity to sort of translate, translate these things into, into language that visual designers can understand. And on the other hand, you should do it because it makes you happy. And, um, it will push your business forward and your discipline forward and all that. So, um, I took these last four months to, to rebrand and work, work on my, my new uh, positioning and yeah, now I'm, I'm proud to, I'm proud to launch Symbolon branding, mm -hmm. um, which is all uh, going to have to do with the symbols that mm -hmm. we make and the way we understand them. Awesome. Uh, I love this. <laughs> and what happened with the, with the other guy? Uh, with the business, uh, with the name. Uh, so um, the the guy is still in the UK. Uh, mm -hmm. He hasn't he hasn't been aggressive about anything. He his website was lastdesign.eu. Okay. And it's still active. 
Uh, so yeah, like he hasn't he hasn't sort of made any any aggressive moves or anything like mm. that. Yeah, but, it's weird to. Yeah. Well, it 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 was a good. Um, it was a good waking up moment for me in whether I want my life's work to be tied to me personally. Yeah, this is what I wanted to say that sometimes things happen that we think that they're bad, but you end up finding something that will help you grow instead. And it's a good thing. So it is. Yeah. Can you tell me more about uh, semiotics and visual design? How do you bring them uh, in your process? Okay, the process. So nothing, nothing is 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 very fixed yet. I'm still, and this is this is why I said like I'm I'm very early in in the beginning of this. But there's um, there's so much work done in in the in the way things are broken down. The main idea is that as and and I have been I have been following some evolutionary uh, psychology for this as well. So the the standard approach is that the world is made of objects. Mm -hmm. But while this is true, and you know the world is made of matter and all that, the main the main way we the main way we understand the world is we focus on the things that are important around us. So if, if someone would say, um, you know, describe me your room, you would say, okay, there's a microphone in there and a chair and a bed. And you start listing the things that you can use, mm -hmm. the things that will, will change your, um, your output in, in a certain way. So, the main, if, if you want, you can describe your bed in infinite detail and you describe your microphone in infinite hmm. detail. And there's so many things that you can say to describe something that it's impossible. Like you can spend your whole life time doing this. Yeah. So our mind makes simplifications and start working on what are the things that the other person can use. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the relevant information? If if you want to say, hey, like you ask me, tell me about your um, about who you are. I could start with you know my elementary school days, <laughs> and I can tell you like I had a friend, and his favorite toy was like it. It can it can grow huge. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is our mind makes these simplifications, and our mind constantly makes these decisions. Um, to find out what's what's critical, and some things are uh, some things are tools, are things that we can use in order to bring more order and more um, um, more solutions to our lives and a better outcome. And some things are obstacles. So, semiotics works in in pretty much the same way. There is um. For for everything that we design, there is a nest of design of design solutions that are meant to be either either visible or invisible. So, mm -hmm. um, this this mug, for example, um, so it has a certain shape and it has a certain color, and that color means uh, that you know it represents this uh, thing. But it, for me, it also represents my brand color and. Everything, everything in this, in this thing is nested. So the actual colors of the of the of the mug are embedded into further symbolism and further symbolism. So there are people, and there's there's a um, there's a great guy uh, actually expanding on this work right now. There are people who sort of have develop the language of these fundamental things, mm -hmm. these fundamental signs and the fundamental ideas uh, that describe any sign, any symbol. So the whole point that I'm trying to achieve is for us to understand it and use it in the correct way so we don't overdo it uh, in design and we we only we, we're we're careful 
with what we're doing. I think I'm very vague. I'll I'll, I'll go with an example. <laughs> Don't worry, man. So, if we want to design, say, a Christmas card. Mm -hmm. So, um, that was that was one of my biggest challenges in the beginning of my career because I started I started learning design as a self-taught person mm -hmm. and always my challenge was I know how to make the thing I don't know what thing to make so I, I was finding various tutorials online that might say hey uh, how to make a Christmas card but the tutorials actually were how to make this specific Christmas card yeah. on Illustrator or whatever so but my thing was, does a Christmas card have to be green, red? Um, mm -hmm. Can it be blue? Does it have to have a Christmas tree? Can it have a Santa mm -hmm. Claus? Does it have to have a snowman? Does it need to say, Happy Christmas, Merry Christmas? What are my choices in this? And if, <clears throat> if you make a Christmas card that has Santa Claus, reindeer, Christmas trees, um, what else? Like um, gifts and kids and carols and um, Christmas pudding. You start using this. You start evoking the same idea to your audience. Uh, you're 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 not adding something different. You're adding parts of the same element of Christmasness. Mm -hmm. This is like. This is like making making a dessert and adding sugar and chocolate and strawberries and honey, and you're adding things that look different, but they have the same effect on on your dessert. So in the end, it's going to be too sweet for everyone, and it's going to be objectively bad. And mm -hmm. I think I think the design works the same way with with symbols so if you add many things of one thing of of one nature and 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 you miss something of another nature then then your design is going to be ruined so semiotics sort of helps classify these things and mm -hmm. understand and understand the sugar that is in all of the ingredients that I told you before, mm -hmm. so that you know that you know this is going to to make this is going to take my design in a certain way. So I think if we're more conscious on on what the symbols mean and what uh, and how they work and what they uh, what feeling they evoke in in our psyche, then it's easier to make these sort of very profound, very powerful. Um, very powerful works that are going to communicate the message. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, yeah, it, actually, you make me think on how I uh, maybe work and how I think. So that's good. And so I can't, I understand that you are just like, so I understand like you are breaking down the, the basic elements. Mm -hmm and you work from there it's like you have some guidelines that you f you follow it's like like rules or guidelines like i i think so i i think the breakthrough that's happening right now in my work is is not mine i'm just understanding it mm -hmm. um um there is this there was this uh, philosopher uh, back in the 19th century called uh, charles purse and he he was the founder of semiotics, mm -hmm. and basically he made he made um, a very short periodic table of uh, of oh. sem semiotic elements. Yeah. So it's very short; it's ten classifications, mm -hmm. which is not much, but it also like you know there's um, there's things in there like the the. Um, the absolute properties of a of a thing that so for example when when you put red on a page the first thing it is it's red it's it's red itself you know it's um a red car is a red car it doesn't symbolize a red car it is a red car you know um 
so the artifact itself is a symbol of itself. This is the, the most this is the most basic fundamental thing. So you have things like icons. So um, the the phone icon is is a really good uh, representation because it has two different uh, two different positions in a thing. It symbolizes a phone, mm -hmm. a phone handle, an mm -hmm. old phone handle, but it also symbolizes the ability to call people. So yeah. on your on 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 your smartphone, if you see the phone icon. Mm -hmm. It represents a f an old uh, phone uh, handle, but it also tells you if you click this, if you tap on this, you're going to be able to call people. Yeah. So it, what it's showing and what you understand as a person, what it's representing to you. Yeah. Well, what? It, what? Yeah. The, it symbolizes an object, mm -hmm. but it also symbolizes an abstract idea so it works in, in yeah. both ways and if it's green it's cold and if it's red it's stop the call you know it's yeah, yeah. It, so this is this is it's all nested it's it's not it's not separated mm -hmm. but we can add things into this and add more solution the further away so the the periodic table works in in a very in a very weird way in that it's all nested in 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 reality it's all um every in in the top you have you know the ab absolute objects and in the further reaches you have the various uh sort of more complex ideas yeah i like that you bring a the theoretic part in it and you don't just design it like yeah I, I, I a lot of thought behind it behind that symbol behind all the process yeah i think i think this is where we go wrong like i've i've heard so many designers say hey i'm i'm working on something and after a while it becomes worse and we we if we don't know what we're doing we don't understand it but in in reality what we're doing is we're trying we're we're trying to over engineer a specific aspect of, of a thing and we keep adding more of the same material in there and it just doesn't work. And on the other hand, <clears throat> this, is, this is why we're so, as a design community, we're so pleased with minimalism and bare essentials and, and that still stands like it still works it's just mm -hmm. i think we have been we have been working very experimentally for the, the past you know thousand years that or 500 years that design is a thing i suppose a discipline i think we we're working very very experimentally and that's wrong um that's that's a sign of infancy in in our craft and i think <clears throat> this happens now with with everyone good design comes with experience everyone needs to be 40 50 years old to to make you know astounding work and this is because you you have to fail lots of times and your mind has to make these connections without you being aware of them. But what if we had a guidebook to tell us, mm -hmm. okay, just don't do these things and mm -hmm. you'll be fine. So rather than failing a million times or a thousand times, we can just sort of understanding in the same, the same way, you know, chemists or cooks, yeah. like um, gastronomy is, is a great example because you know, when, when you start understanding how cooking works, you start experimenting and you find your, you find your process, you find your things. But then when we, when we understood, when we understood uh, food chemistry, mm -hmm. we started realizing, you know, what, what certain, certain 
chemical properties do to our food. Uh, one, one very exciting um, idea that I, uh, I was introduced to in, in school was that you can't unboil an egg. Like, <laughs> if you boil it and it cools down, it doesn't go back to how it was. Yeah. Like, there's a, there's a certain temperature that's going to do something to your egg and it's going to make it white and white. The, 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 the transparent part of the yolk mm -hmm. is going to become white if you apply heat to it and it doesn't go back. There's no way to do it. So, rather than just trying to see what happens, if you know how how the temperature changes the bonds and we'll do that mm -hmm. and whatever. You can understand how to do cool new things. So I, I think design can, be in the, can work in the same way. If you know what you're doing, perhaps there's no need to make, you know, a thousand sketches for a logo. Perhaps you, you just know what you should be doing. Well, yes, because as you said, you had like, you know that what works, what ingredients, even if you're experimenting with new ingredients, you know, you know what they will do to each other. So it's easier to know the final outcome in a way. Um, so yeah, I, I like this, uh, um, this example. I'm going back to the generalism and specialism. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that you are targeting very specific um, clients. Mm -hmm. And they are like restaurants and um, around food, gastronomy is, mm -hmm. uh, and also they need to be unique. I think uh, maybe some people that are hearing this are, maybe it sounds scare, scary to specialize so much and not only in branding, but in specific clients. But mm -hmm. I think that it's very clever because even in, um, uh, business part uh, in the business uh, part when those people uh, learn about you when you have your name out there um, mm -hmm. they you will be unique they will know that if I have a unique restaurant I will go to Timmy to design it I've met many people who are sort of scared of of positioning and this is this is where um, I separate specializing specializing and positioning mm -hmm. so I think, especially in the early years of a business, it's important to to take to take take any work, like take. Well, obviously, it needs to to respect you, and you know, you don't you don't take bad work, but it's still important to take as much work as possible. And when you're at capacity, then you start thinking about who you can afford to lose rather mm. than be, be without, without projects and just mm. hope for the, the right one to yeah. show up. The difference, is, the difference is with positioning is that you can, you can fish for, again, food metaphor, you can fish with, uh, with, for one kind of client if something mm -hmm. else bites that's mm -hmm. fine if mm -hmm. if if you if you show that you can solve a certain kind of problem and people people can imagine um that you can give a solution to them as well mm -hmm. that's great that that shows two things first of all the client is good enough to imagine that you can you can solve his problem because my experience so far i've been i've been in design for nine years in total the biggest thing is making the client understand the leap mm -hmm. so for us design is very simple like you you show me um you know you show me a poster about you know spiders and i can imagine how a, um, a poster about giraffes is going to look in in your style or in your uh, in your way because i know I know what you did under a hood, but mm -hmm. the, the client many times yeah. sees spiders and he says like, no man, I don't care about spiders. I have giraffes. And <laughs> like, yeah, but it's the same thing. Like, you don't know, you don't trust me. Yeah, yeah. So, so the thing is you need to show the work for, for the clients to feel safe that you can, you can have the job they need done. 
if the client can make the leap and imagine and come to you and say, hey, Dimi, I know you will only work with restaurants, but we have this amazing um, you know, laser tag uh, uh, thing, and I know nothing to do with food, but could you help? I can, and I probably will do it, especially, especially now that I'm not so... Um, like I'm always, I'm always in need of new work rather than, you know, if, if at some point I'm at capacity, I will have to pick the, the projects that I need more. But it's, specializing is not saying no to people to come to you. It's just about showing the work, the positioning is about showing the work and speaking the language of the people that you want to yeah, attract. attract. Yeah. Hmm. Definitely. Uh, do you cook, by the way? I do cook. I awesome. I, I love I love cooking. Um, lately, I have been have been crazy about making my own bread. Oh, uh, yeah. awesome! That's my <laughs> that's my latest development, I suppose. Um, yeah. Cool. Um, so, uh, what are the three things that you must deliver to your clients. Okay. That's good. That's not mine. Uh, it's, um, so I, I've taken these three principles for every, every logo that I make and every brand identity project, uh, mm -hmm. from Sagi Haviv from, um, um, uh, Chermayev, Haviv, and oh my God, did I forget their third partner? Anyway, Sagi Haviv is is a great uh, great logo designer. He's done work for National Geographic and uh, uh, Chase Bank and stuff like that. And um, so, work that is simple, mm -hmm. unique, and appropriate. Okay. So. Appropriate, as in make something people people will will sort of appreciate for for the uh, for the service or the product of the business. Simple means the easiest way to achieve this, uh, the better. And unique means you know zag when everybody else is zigging. Like make sure that you you help your clients be the the weird one. Be mm. the, different one. I think Yahoo did this beautifully back in the 90s when everyone was going with strong corporate blue. Yahoo was the purple thing with the mm. cartoonish characters and the uh, and the exclamation mark in the end. <laughs> that, that's like help your clients do that. Be mm. the pink ones. You know, yeah, be, yeah. be the weird ones. Awesome. Love the three. Um, any difficulties you're facing right now to reach your goal? Tons. Um, we're in a global recession, which is bad uh, for everyone. Uh, I live in the UK and I work with people all around the world and don't know even whether um, we're, uh, we're having um, um, political troubles lately. So that means that for me, it's it's not even easy to to know what to charge because uh, if I'm paid in dollars and I don't know the value of dollars, you know, tomorrow or it's, it's a constant uh, shift. And the other, what else? Um, uh, we live in a time uh, that people in around our age and younger. Are having financial trouble in general. Like I, I think the money, the money that we get, and the expectations of life are very different. Like a, a generation ago or two generations ago, our parents would probably, you know, if, if they were doing the work that we did, they, they we we own our own house and probably could afford to have a couple of children and stuff like that. And now, now that that's gone and and basically, you know, you you have to, to live in a, in a box uh, paying rent and stuff like that. But um, so that means for for me and, and my family to stay afloat, I need to be working 
really, really hard. And just because we live in a, in a recession of sorts, it's, it's always easy to feel guilty of not making more money. So it's really difficult to get out of work or stop, stop working. And I, I think that's, that's the main thing, maintaining, maintaining some life balance uh, with, with on the same time knowing that perhaps tomorrow the opportunities might be even worse. And mm. so you need to, yeah. to do the work today because you never know. So, uh, to be ready for the future. Yeah. 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 Definitely. And also you moved to London, you started a business. I want also to move abroad, but you also started a business. So how hard it was to, I don't know, go to a new country and start. So there was, there was, um, so I left, I left Greece at the time where it was really easy to leave Greece. Like, uh, I left after after like i left in in february 2016 so after the the weird um summer of uh queuing in the atms and you know the big uh the big financial collapse in greece in 2015 and then it was really easy to say you know, like yeah. what what's the worst that's gonna happen <laughs> like, um, yeah uh and so in in that regard i i, I think Coming here, I should have done it sooner, that's for sure. Um, starting a business here in the UK, it, it, took for, uh, in, it took a while. So first I needed to sort of, um, you know, find, find work. And I think that's the big, um, that's the big uh, problem for many people and wasn't for me. Moving, moving to a new country means definitely means that you need to be willing to go through the motions, and uh, you need to be willing to do anything in order for your long-term plans to succeed. So that means my first job here was uh, delivering leaflets. Mm. Uh, minimum wage. I, I walked 14 kilometers a day, just putting leaflets on their doors and stuff like that. And and you need to be ready to do that if if you mm. want to make it. Like um, some people come with uh, with job opportunities, and it's always like someone uh, uh, you know giving you some interest, and you go through the interviews and stuff like that. But if that doesn't work, mm -hmm. then you need to be willing to do whatever it needs yeah. to survive. Mm -hmm. In terms of in terms of how easy it's been, uh setting up a business in terms of bureaucracy and stuff like that, it was it was that, you know? It's, just, uh, <laughs> it's I, not like here. <laughs> it's nothing it's nothing like race, that's for sure. And um, the other thing is you're expected even like here in the UK even even at minimum wage you're expecting to survive so that's a big thing when when we came here because in greece you're not you're not able to survive in minimum wage period you need support from your family and your parents but here even even um you know after leaflets i i was i was uh, working at um ice cream shop for a while we could pay our bills and pay rent and, you know, buy pillows and frying pans. And we were expecting to have a sort of decent life. It was not a life of, um, you know, luxury or anything else. But <clears throat> there is this expectation that you have a center, uh, a certain um, standard of living. And that that's a big shift from Greece. Like, hmm. When I was in Greece, I was I was working a better job. Like I was um, um, I was a designer, nine to five office work, um, and I couldn't survive on my own. Like it was no, like my parents had to chip in, even though I was three years in my work and um, couldn't afford no. couldn't afford a, a, a fridge. Like <laughs> yeah, 
that's the thing. I didn't own a car. Like it's um, it's it's very very different. I would say for people who want to migrate, um, to be conscious of their expectations. Mm. I, I I see many people here that didn't find that they had a support network in Greece, so they had they had the house from their parents and they had some sort of standardized income from something else and they came to the UK and they found out they had to work hard for uh, what they're doing. So it's, it's more of a jungle. Like you can, it, it, it has more fruit, but you have to fight more. To yeah, it. yeah, definitely. Mm, so we talk about semiotics and how do you work? I also know that you want to make uh, brand identities that will stand the test of time. Mm -hmm. So as a conclusion, how can someone make a mark that will last, uh, that will be permanent? Okay. That's, that's a great question. If, if, if I knew the answer a hundred percent, I would <laughs> have, you know, have done it already and, and be a millionaire, but I think it's very, very easy to be tempted, especially in logo design. It's very tempting uh, to, to follow trends, but that's the worst way to possible to do that. Like the things we still recognize are things that are timeless and things that we cannot really say with absolute resolve when they were made. And that's the best thing, like, unless you know the business is fresh, uh, like the, the Apple logo could have been designed a hundred years ago. Apple didn't exist and we know that and that's fine, but this is, but it used to be, it used to have all these sort of design trends on it, like it used to be colorful yeah. and used to be very <laughs> weird. But the thing is the, the main challenge is like, try to make things that are as much timeless as possible hmm. avoid trends like the plague you don't need them strip it down to the most basic the most hmm. basic forms and of course um I'm, I'm not advocating against you know modular logos or um you know logo systems or things that can change with uh, with uh, what you need, like Nickelodeon is a, is a great example of you know a mm. logo that's changing, but on the same on the same time, make sure it's not a trend. It's something that you design as a system, rather than saying, oh, you know, um, don't don't try too hard. Uh, mm. Logo needs to identify, not signify. It doesn't yeah. need. To doesn't need to to show the kind of work that you're doing. Just needs to stand you apart. Mm. Um, exactly. Everybody. Yeah. Uh, we are closer to the end. Uh, where people can find you? Okay. So by the time this is online, you can find me in www symbolon branded. Uh, br ah, crap. There you go. <laughs> www.symbolonbranding.com dot co dot uk and uh, symbol on branding at symbol on branding in instagram and twitter and um facebook like mm -hmm. that. i will have all the links in the description so yeah uh so that's that's pretty much my uh, my social media output i'm not very active on twitter i i read a lot but i don't really post anything uh so that's the that's the easiest way my website cool uh i also also one thing that i do with every guest is mm -hmm. at the end i will ask them three random fast questions uh you can answer fast you can uh say the first thing that pops in your mind and then analyze it you can answer slow it's it's up to you okay <laughs> so um, we talk about gastronomy and food so i think the first question will be uh which is the most unique thing or weird that you have eaten? Oh, crap. <laughs> the most unusual thing that you have. Uh... I've eaten ostrich when I was okay. really young and I, <laughs> I found it was, 
it was lovely. It was amazing. Um, so I, for most people, it's not even weird. Um, but it was weird for me at the time, and I love it. So I, I've tried it twice, and I, I want to eat it again. Okay. Uh, second uh, one will be, which is your favorite brand? Ooh, good one. Uh, my favorite brand. Wow. Um, right now, I would say National Geographic. Mm. I, I think they've done great work. It's yeah. very timeless and it means lots of things to different people. Uh, I, I think they've, they've done this. I think it's probably the most recognizable magazine in the world. And yeah, I think it's, uh, it's great. Awesome. There. I like this one. Yeah. And finally, a book that everyone should read. Okay. Wow. <laughs> design book? Whatever. No, it doesn't need to be a designer that everyone uh, should read before they die. <laughs> It's going to be a dark one. I would say 1984 by George Orwell. 1984. I don't know it, but yeah. Um, I will have it in uh, the description. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a literature literature book, uh, really classic, uh, dystopian future. I think it's it's a great read. Uh, cool. Anything you want to say in final thoughts, final tips you want to give? First of all, I, I, I really like, uh, I, I want to push more people to, uh, to make this, this kind of thing that you do, um, sharing ideas and speaking to other people um, uh, online. I think, I think it's, a, it's a great opportunity for self-reflection. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think for every one of us, the more the more we we speak about how how we view things and the more more we write about how we we view things the more we understand ourselves and the easier it, it becomes so a tip would be for people to do more of what we're doing right now and communicating about the serious stuff um so yeah that's my that's awesome my parting thought like this one for uh, closing. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you for being my guest. It's uh, It's been a great pleasure, really. <laughs> Thanks. And for you that you're watching the video or you have listened to the podcast, thank you for being with us. Let me know in the comments if anything that you have heard helped you because it helped me for the next videos. And I'll see you in the next one.